Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show, talking with British humorous radio host, the great Martin Lewis. And you, you said during the commercial, I got to ask you about this. You accidentally got Pete Townsend drunk. Uh, Ex explain yes. this. What well, happened? First of all, this was when Pete was drinking. Yeah. It was back in 1979. I was producing a show called The Secret Policeman's Ball. Right. It was mainly comedy, Monty Python. And I asked Pete to be there. It was there. a big deal. I remember hearing about that. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And I asked Pete to do just a couple of songs in between the comedy skits, just acoustic. I was like the, the beginning of Unplugged, if you like. Mm. Anyway, so he did a, sh a couple of songs right at the beginning of the show. And he said, I'll come back later. When do you need me? I said, oh, a about an hour. But of course, have you ever met a comedian that comes off the stage quickly? No, if there's getting laughs, they stay no, on you stage. Yeah, you want right. to stay, yeah. So it's, I realized. <laughs> Some it was, stay too long. That's right. Well, it was realized, but there was Monty Python, it was great. It was late at night, and it was going on a bit late. I thought, I'll offer him a drink. Right. Now, I, I'm a Jewish kid. I don't know anything about alcohol at that stage in my life. So I go up to Pete and said, would you like a drink? He said, yeah, just get me a small brandy. <laughs> so, and what's brandy? Oh, yeah, oh, it's that wine thing. <laughs> so I went down, I found the bar, and I found a big bottle of brandy, and I thought, oh, those glasses look very small. I took him a pint mug. <laughs> and I took it into me and said, here you are. And he said, no, no, no. He knew what would happen. And he, yeah. he said, Martin, do not leave that here. It's dangerous. Just leave me a small amount. <laughs> well, I said, ah, it's a charity show. You're doing it for free. Knock yourself out. Well, <laughs> that's what he did. <laughs> uh, that's what he did. Yeah. I completely yeah. forgot about him because the comedy went on for another three hours. And finally, it was time for his grand finale. He was going to come on stage and play. Won't get fooled again. Or as I call it, won't get drunk again. Yeah. Um, and he, I go up there and he's lying on the floor. The bottle's <laughs> empty. And I'm going, oh. my God, what is this? I don't know from... I don't it's know like, from I told alcohol. you it was dangerous. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> Some just, people know. You know? He, got, he got, oh, I got, got him downstairs and he, he went down and he was staggering down and he sat down and he started playing and he was doing a duet with a great classical guitarist and there's the two of them. And the classical guitarist is like the deer in, with his head in the, the headlights. He's going, oh, the guy's drunk. But Pete starts playing and he's playing immaculately. Yeah. And I'm watching this, except at about 30 seconds into the song, Pete fell asleep. <laughs> now, when I say Pete fell asleep, 95% of him fell asleep, except the hand kept strumming. No And I'm way. watching this, I'm dying. I'm thinking so he this could literally do it in his sleep. And then he woke himself up and, it, and they continued on. And, and the next night he came back and played. We did this four nights. And the next night he came back and he said, you never give me a drink again. And he played it brilliantly the next night. That's the version that's in the movie and on the album. Right. But it taught me a lesson. But you, the thing is, the problem is, being a Jewish kid raised in England, I didn't know what alcohol was because... The Jewish kids, we're raised on something like... It's the equivalent of Manischewitz. Yeah. You know what that stuff tastes yeah. like? It's the most horrible stuff in the world. And I realise why Jewish parents give their kids Manischewitz. It's aversion therapy. Yeah. You taste it, you go... I'll yeah, never drink, drink yes. this stuff. That's well, booze. I don't want booze. I, don't, I, I mean, I was <laughs> until I was 25, till I tasted good wine. I said, they were hiding this stuff from me. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, well, what about... Wait, did we have some... Uh, Names Danny put together some names of people that surrounded the Beatles that I don't know if you have any, I don't know, opinions on or anecdotes. Like, like May Pang was always someone that was a mystery to me. John Lennon's girlfriend for a little while. That's right. Yeah, I know May a little bit. She's, she's a sweet girl. It was a strange period in John's life. I mean, uh, he and Yoko were going through a bit of a bumpy patch, which yeah. is the euphemism we use in England. Uh, they were going through a bumpy patch, and May was the person who guided him through that. Yoko actually wanted him to get away for a bit, and it was a, he went through it for a weekend. Uh, in, uh, in well, that was the famous, like, Harry Lost Nielsen weekend. and all those guys yeah. the last weekend, right? It was, it was 18 months. But Harry, <laughs> if you, who I did know very well, yeah. Harry was a total trip. And uh, th th I'm surprised it lasted as short as 18 months. Because with Harry, you know, you went out for a drink with Harry, you never came back. One of the best pretty... voices ever, they say, though, Harry Nielsen. <laughs> just, but just a total... Uh, addict, couldn't control himself. Yeah, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but he used to sing. Funny enough, the one place he would sing live, he famously didn't do concerts. He, after John was murdered, he would come every year to the Beatle fan convention yeah. because he wanted to raise, raise money for gun control and he would sing to the Beatle fans. Uh -huh. And he loved John so much. That was his only place of singing. No kidding. Uh, Throw well. me some more names. Throw <laughs> me some more. <laughs> okay, we're well, up before Phil Spector. What do you think would have. I mean, you know, if John Lennon were alive and he heard the Phil Spector stuff, he probably would have said, listen, he's probably guilty, right? <laughs> well, uh, the, the thing about Phil Spector, I mean, first of all, you've got to give credit to his wig master. I mean, yeah. that's some, <laughs> some serious stuff. Um, the thing about Phil Spector, famously, you remember, he produced... Uh, he was given the tapes of the Get Back Sessions that yeah. became Let It Be. And Paul was the one who hated what 
Phil Spector did to the Let It Be album. Um, because he, you know, he put that Phil Spector sound. It wasn't what Paul felt was right. And he put girls' choirs on Let right, It Be, a long right. winding road. It was terrible. Anyway, finally, do you remember a few years ago, um, they brought out, a, a, Paul was in charge of it, Let It Be Naked, which was the Let It Be album without the Phil Spector stuff. Yes. And I went to Apple. I said, I got a great marketing tag for this. When you bring this out, you said, hey, before he murdered that girl, he murdered our album. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the other one. For some reason, they didn't use that. No, I, well, the original <laughs> Let It Be, I thought was great. I mean, I, so I, I think maybe Paul was too close. What he did to it was... Phil Spector was his own kind of genius, but uh, I could see where Paul McCartney would get aggravated. Yes. <laughs> uh, we got to take another quick break and uh, back and close the hour out with Martin Lewis. Hey, welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Martin Lewis is here. Real quick, I want to talk about what you just said. You, you, you wrote a, a Monty Python's type sketch that you got Robert De Niro to star in. Well, I'm only going to tease you because we're yeah, saying that's not well, coming what, out until next no, year. No, I know, it's not going to come out, but what, did you do it already? Uh, yeah, we did it. It was um, with Michael Palin from Monty Python. I had an idea for a sketch, and I came up with... Uh, I threw it, and he said, well, look, you write the first draft, and I'll polish it, because he's he's really funny. But and I wrote specifically it for De Niro Well, uh, and uh, Michael Palin? Uh, 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 specifically, we needed a major, major movie star, and my thing was... I got to aim really high. Who could I get that would, would bound to say no? Sounds That's what I've always great. done. So I just aimed at Robert De Niro, and to my surprise, he said yes. So uh, <laughs> and there's more of that story. But I'm saving that for next year because there's there's no. I I'd love to. Hear, we, we could give you an exclusive. When I come back, I'll we'll play the clip here exclusively. I'd love. What to about hear. the uh, the Sting thing? I mean, Sting has always been kind of just un an untouchable enigma, and you hear so many things about him as a uh, you know as you're saying, the tantric guy uh, who, <laughs> who lives in shrouded in mystery. I mean, what's your experience with, with that? Well, first of all, Sting's got a great sense of humor. He does put out this thing that, you know, this very serious thing and you re, you know, he, he, cause he's quite, very well educated and he, he, he studies philosophy and he can talk about that stuff and it comes across rather serious, but he's also got a great sense of humor. So uh, we, we have a relationship going back over 30 years now. I, I got him into the secret policeman's ball shows and uh, right. there's always a bit of a wind-up going on between the two of us. We he'll he'll try and get me laughing, and I'll try and get him laughing. And uh, we, he, we we go into obscure British B-sides from bands you've never heard of. I mean, real <laughs> you know, we'll wind each other up with. So them. he'll call you up at three in the morning with. Uh... A quiz. He he once called me up at three o'clock in the morning and said, uh, uh, "What was the B side of the new vaudeville band song?" Uh, so, so and I said, "I don't know the B side." I said, uh, "Oh no, that was uh, Finchley Central or something like that." And so he said, "Fine, thank you." I had a bet with a taxi driver <laughs> and put the phone down. Wow. And that was that. <laughs> How often does that yeah. happen? Uh, fortunately, not that regularly. But um, <laughs> but last time we got together, I was doing an interview with him for this uh, uh, box set for for Amnesty, and uh, we had a few minutes to spare, and we were just sitting down, and suddenly we. He picked up a guitar and we spontaneously broke into this obscure song. You might remember there was a, a, a song called Winchester Cathedral. Remember okay, that? Yeah. That's before your time. But um, this was the follow up to that, but it never made it in, in America. But Sting and I are the same age, sort of, and we we did it. So somewhere there's a videotape of me singing with Sting. Wow. He's slightly better than me. <laughs> uh, now, is the tantric yeah. sex thing a bunch of crap? Is that what you're saying? Well, I haven't tried it myself, <laughs> but, um, Well, no, the, the funny thing is, I mean, he does, he did, I think he did, has now admitted that he was putting on a, an interview. He was, he was interviewed by Rolling Stone and stuff like that. But I had my own version because he was saying it was making all of us guys feel insecure because Sting was saying, you know, uh -huh. as a result of this tantric sex, when making love to my wife, I can sustain an erection for five hours. My God, well, imagine what he's like with his girlfriend. Well, you know, you, can say, <laughs> uh, you know the, right, his wife called Mrs. Sting. I mean, it's a you know, painful experience. But I had my own version. I said, look, that's nothing. That's not, it's impressive, but it's not as long as the eight hours that I can sustain an erection while talking about myself. <laughs> so, you know. Well, we've done it here yeah. for half an hour. Right? Uh, uh, Ma Martin yeah. Lewis, uh, thanks so much for coming, man. And uh, you please come back anytime. And I look forward to the world exclusive, the De Niro Monty Python. Game. Absolutely. Uh, it's such a pleasure being on the show. Thank it really you. is. The great Martin Lewis, and um, back after. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.